I didn't really prepare for this podcast or whatever you want to call it, video interview. Uh, I just found Ian online. Is it Ian Maclinau? Uh, Maclinau, yeah. Ma- Maclinau. And that's Filipino, yeah. right? Cool. It is, yep. I love Ponsit. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't like <laughs> it that much, but <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so Ian's an interesting fellow. I, I ran into him online on Facebook, I think, or maybe we were met at Capital Factory or something. But Ian likes to blog and talk about cryptocurrency and software engineering and fintech and anything involving crypto. And you were previously a software engineer at Pipe, right? And now you're working full time on Saber. Um, Saber and uh, Ubiswap, yeah. And Ubiswap, yeah. I actually just learned what Ub is. It's a, uh, it's like a type of flavor, right? It's like a. It is. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> Philip, it's a popular like root in the Philippines, like a sweet potato. Okay. Very cool. Um, so I have been learning more about Ian and he's been blogging a lot about crypto and how you can really have huge returns in the market. And I've seen you blog about everything from like leveraging houses to, um, you know, earning very high APYs online. And I wanted to just talk more about and pick your brain on how you see crypto and decentralized finance. I think you're not only a subject matter expert, but you're also a builder too, which is kind of hard to find. Usually it's one or the other. And typically the builders, (laughs) from what I've seen, don't have the best social skills. (laughs) Um, So... I guess we'll just jump right into it. You recently raised eight million from Social Capital and a couple of other people. How long did that round take? Um, maybe like, I think we just like raised for like two months before, like I guess we wow. launched our token. Um, I mean, we weren't like explicitly raising. It's just that you know, if there's people that want to be on board that uh, provide a lot of value, we'd like to let them in. So they gave you cash or did they invest like and get tokens out of it? Or how did, how did that work? If I may ask. Um, they invested in equity of the company. Okay. So they owned like literally equity and not like the tokens, if you will. I, um, I don't even know how that translates. We, we also gave them, uh, I guess, warrants to uh, purchase tokens if we were to launch a network. Um, gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to go too much into the details of this. Okay. Though, but yeah yeah uh how does it feel to be ian right now i mean what you're 20 something years old and you've raised eight million dollars like what does that feel like um i mean i'm not sure if the raise was the big thing for me it's really just building a protocol that now has uh like 900 million dollars in it that, that, that's wow. the stuff that's really exciting to me and when did you start the saber network um i so we started uh i think as so basically it was like a Solana DeFi hackathon in like November of last year. And uh, that's when me and one of uh, my co-founders, uh, Michael, uh, built the first version of Saber. It was called StableSwap at the time. But uh, we kind of like left it on the back burner for four months because Michael was starting a new job and uh, Pipe was getting kind of busy. But uh, in uh, April of this year, we picked it up again because uh, first of all, the market was... Uh, a lot different in Solana. So back in uh, October of last year, Solana was like, I think like $2, but then in October it was around like 30. Um, but on top of that, uh, we, uh, we just had like more time to like work on Solana stuff at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got more into Rust. Um, but yeah, so I guess around April 22 is when I started picking up stable swap again. So five mo- less than five months. Yeah. 900 million in TVL, total value locked. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. How does that feel, man? Like, that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, I just want to keep growing it more. Uh, I think that it's not living up to its full potential yet because we don't have very many assets in it yet. Um, you have other people on the team. You're obviously one of the co-founders. There's other co-founders as well. And I'm sure employees too. Uh, yeah, two co-founders. So Michael, who was the uh, original dev of the the smart contracts, and mm-hmm. my brother Dylan, who is uh, 
basically handling everything that's not engineering. And your company is based in Texas, right? Prosper, Texas. That's cool. Are you, are you guys all living in that location? Uh, two of us are. And okay. uh, the third guy just like floats around, but he's also from the Dallas area. That's amazing, man. I mean, it's not often that I meet people who have $900 million in total value locked that are under the age of 40, 30, whatever. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, <clears throat> I want to jump into Solana. I, I really, I, I like to think I know much about crypto. I don't know shit. So like, what is Solana and how does that compare to Ethereum? Yeah, sure. So Solana is just another blockchain that's extremely fast. And the trade-off it makes is that it uh, has no, or like basically the people who are mining Solana blocks are assumed to be like extremely fast compute or people who have access to extremely fast hardware. And because of that, uh, they're able to just make the blockchain scale a lot better for uh, transactions. Um, how does it compare to Ethereum? It uses a completely different programming model. Um, that's, I think that's like the main thing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just like a better, uh, faster, or at least faster. Period. How much faster? So, uh, it, I, I think, uh, blocks and Solana mine in like 400 milliseconds, but in Ethereum, uh, it take 15 seconds, but on oh, Ethereum, wow. you have to pay like really high transaction fees, but in Solana, those 400 millisecond blocks are like, you pay like 0. 0.000005 soul, which is like probably less than a cent, I think. Wow. Is one soul equal to one coin, like token of Solana? So it's 30 yeah. bucks, 30 times 0. 0.00, whatever. Oh, soul is now like, I think 120 bucks, but yeah. Okay. Wait, so you said there's soul and there's Solana. There's two different. Or sorry, there's... soul and Solana are the same token. So what is, soul what's is just that like 30 the, bucks? the ticker. Uh, so in April of oh, uh, this year, that's when soul was 30 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, it went from two dollars in October of last year to thirty dollars at the time we uh, picked StableSwap back up. The last time we spoke, you were very bullish on Celo, and mm -hmm. that's what you built UbaSwap on. Are you still bullish about Celo? And now you're obviously bullish about Solana. So, like, my question is: Are you still bullish about both of those, and will you be bullish about those in the future? Or what might there be something else that you're more keen about? Yeah, I mean, I think in the future, there might be something better. Um, but for now, I think Solana is the best execution platform. It's just like really, really fast. And um, what does execution like it, platform mean? Uh, so it's the best platform to like execute transactions. So you have platforms like Bitcoin, which are not good for like running transactions, but they're good for like storing value um, just because they have like a lot of people like believing in the asset and like there's like a lot of liquidity there. Um, but in a platform like Solana, right, it doesn't have as much um, stuff you could do on it, but it's really fast. So it's good for uh, applications that don't necessarily need to uh, interact directly with other Ethereum products. Um, but over time, like, you, you know, you'll see more apps being built on Solana. So theoretically, like Solana will get better and better and everyone will just like move their assets over. But like, that doesn't exist yet. Um, but yeah, Solana is just like a really good platform for executing transactions. Now, Celo, on the other hand, I've used Celo very similarly to Terra. Um, first of all, Celo does have extremely good technology. I think it's actually the best EVM chain right now. Um, in what terms is of, EVM? Like, technology. Uh, EVM is Ethereum virtual machine. So it means that it's compatible with Ethereum smart contracts and follows the Ethereum like programming model. But um, yeah, Celo has a good technology. But I think the main thing to note about Celo is that they have a stable coin where if more people basically hold the stable coin, then it results in the price of Celo uh, going up because basically the mechanism of Celo requires those Celo tokens to be bought. But um, the reason why uh, we actually, or I actually originally wanted to revive StableSwap was that um, after launching UbaSwap, I realized I have all this money that I can't actually get into Celo. And a lot of my friends do too. And they all want why to is farm, that? but like they couldn't. It's because there's no exchange to really buy Celo dollars on where you could just buy them really fast. Um, at the time, there was no exchange for it. Like you actually had to just buy Celo, which is not good because you don't want people to take that risk on buying Celo to transfer it over and then selling it. And you also get like a lot of slippage that way, especially if there's very low on-chain liquidity, which was true for Celo at the time. Um, now there's Celo dollar on like 
on KuCoin um, and some other exchanges, but those all require you to use VPNs um, or you're not, you're not supposed to use VPNs, but they require you to, uh, you know, not be in the US. Um, but if you have something like Sabre, right, where you can just place these market orders with extremely low slippage, um, then theoretically you'd be able to get into sell dollar really easily. And on top of that, you, we could increase the liquidity of sell a dollar a lot by uh, having a lot of people build on top of sell a dollar or a Sabre derivative sell a dollar. So that, that's why we, or that, that's why I was kind of interested in doing a stable coin exchange. Um, and since I already built one in Solana with, uh, with Michael, uh, I thought it would be good to just like revive an existing one. So is Solana built on top of Ethereum? No, Solana is a completely separate thing. But it interacts with Ethereum in some way. Yeah, so Solana has uh, these things called bridges where uh, you could basically transfer tokens between um, Solana and Ethereum. Um, they're very unde they're, they're not very developed right now, but in the future, I think they'll uh, we'll be able to like actually send tokens over. And then the whole point of, uh, I guess, like the integration with Stella would be that ideally there's like a, a bridge directly between Celo and Solana so that you could take your Celo dollars on Celo and send to Solana. And then on Solana, you could do like yield farming or whatever with them. And it doesn't matter that the activity is not happening on the Celo chain because as long as the Celo dollar continues to grow in demand, um, theoretically it should help Celo out, which is why, I, yeah, I, I'm still bullish on Celo and I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, uh, trying to, trying to grow it. So when I think about um, this, these APYs that are being offered on Sabre and et cetera, I mean, they're like 10 or 20%. So if I put in my, is it, is it a UST? Is that what it is? Or a, whatever I use to um, stake? Yeah, I mean, you could do like USDT. You, you can do UST. Um, okay. There's like a lot of different currencies to support. So I, I put in my UST and I get APY every every second, like every, is it instantaneous? It's instantaneous, um, yeah. I mean, technically it's every block, but uh, we uh, we like interpolate on the front end. So it looks like it's, it's constantly counting up. Interesting. So where, and you're lending, and you're lending that to someone else at the same uh, time. Sabre doesn't do any lending. Oh, so so Sabre is like a, a swap. So like okay. basically lets people exchange from like one stable coin to another. Interesting. And how are you able to offer such high APYs? Um, I think people are a little, uh, I guess, bullish on the token. So that's that's why that's where the APYs come from. Is the fact that the token that's being issued has a price. And UST is a stable coin. Um, I'm just I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around how this works. Like when I think of APYs, I think 0.5 percent is nice. You know, at a savings account <laughs> obviously this is much higher significantly higher how does that how does that work i'm still trying to wrap my head around that yeah so um basically the apys are not offered in the form of dollars they're actually offered in the form of uh like tokens and since these tokens have value um the apys can be higher than 0.5 percent mm -hmm. Um, like basically tokens are just being given out for, uh, it's not really for free, but they're just being given to people that are staking money into the platform. So I'm looking at your application, you have pools and farms. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going through, let's say a farm USDT to USDC, that's 8%. But then I go to US, UST, USDC, it's 24%, but the USD, USDT, USDC has more total stake. So why is that a lower APY than the other one? Yeah, so the way that the APYs are distributed is that uh, the pools with, like basically there's like a set amount of tokens that go to a pool. And uh, if more people stake into the pool, then the APYs will go down because there's like a fixed amount of tokens being issued uh, per block, uh, but in, or per second. But on top of that, um, total staked um yeah or uh, the, some some pools have like higher uh rewards weights than others so i think usdt usdc has like a much higher reward rate than a lot of the other pools um so that's why it's APYs 
eight percent despite having like 234 million versus like ftt has a eight percent but only has 60 million in it so what about ust that's almost triple the apy what, what makes that apy so much higher um i think it's just the way that the pools are weighted actually let me just check really quick oh yeah actually it looks like the ust pool has a higher uh, pool rate than the usdt pool um but on top of that it has like less uh less money staked in it so it will just have higher apys because of that but on top of what that um there's there's also like a risk of holding ust ust is not like backed one to one by dollars but usdt and usdc are both back to backed one to one or not backed one to one but like you are able to redeem them for actual dollars versus ust you're not um so yeah there's a difference so you can't convert ust to dollars right now like fiat you, you, you can trade it to fiat using something like saber but you can't actually uh like go to some company and give them ust and then they'll give you the dollars they're holding that are backing the ust versus with tether and uh usdc like you can you can go to coinbase and just like withdraw like actual right. dollars to your bank account and these APYs are going to go down as more people stake and as, as more networking effects occur. Is that right? So it's possible. Um, but the thing is the APY is determined by the price of Sabre at the time, which is uh, currently 25 cents. If the price of Sabre were to go up and the, the amount of like money locked in the pool like is around the same or like doesn't increase by that much, then the APYs will theoretically go up. Let's say that the total value locked goes from one billion to to one million. How would that change the APY? So if the price of Saber is the same, then the APYs are just going to skyrocket. Like they're going to be like extremely high. Interesting. Because you're just giving out the same number of Saber tokens um, per second. So if there's only a million dollars in the pool then that million dollars getting all the secret tokens rather than being distributed to uh, $900 million worth of people. Mm -hmm. So how does the math work for that then? Yeah, so, um, let, so let, uh, let's say there's like uh, 1.5 million Saber distributed per day to $900 million, right? So that would be what, 1.5 million divided by 900. Um, and that's like, I guess the uh, percent per day um given right but now if you take that 900 million and take it down to 1 million now you have 1.5 million saber given to 1 million dollars so that would be uh what 1.5 saber per per uh, dollar per person which would mean that you get what 37.5 save or 37.5 cents so that would be 37.5 percent per day given to every uh, yeah given, given to people in the pool Okay. If, so now if that we have the price of 25 cents. So now that we're talking about risk, what is the biggest risk to the cryptocurrency ecosystem in your opinion? Biggest risk to cryptocurrency? Um, like risk of uh, what exactly? Uh, the risk of the total market cap of cryptocurrency going to under 300 million. Oh, um, I guess a bear market, uh, financial like crash or some, of some sort, like stock market crash. Uh, what would cause the macroeconomic thing? Macro. Um, let's say uh, like people are borrowing too much money and uh, like the housing market collapses because all of a sudden people can't pay their loans. Um, another thing is maybe the government prints too much money. So there's like a inflationary spiral. I guess you would be over uh, 300 million then because there's inflation, but um, yeah, it'd be some macroeconomic condition that caused that to happen, I think. Mm -hmm. Or loss of trust in the US dollar, I guess. There's so what if the, <laughs> this is like an end game scenario, but like what if the internet just turns off one day? Like- uh, I, th I think there's gonna be bigger problems than uh, yeah. cryptocurrency going below <laughs> 300 million. <laughs> so, I want to like take a step back and think about the internet. Like there's companies out there that literally put underwater cables in the ocean and that's, and light goes back and forth fiber optics. And that's what the internet runs on. 
-hmm. is there a way to know where that light is coming from like to i guess like to sniff the packets if you will and under and figure out who owns what ethereum wallet um not not in those underwater cables no but i mean there, there are other ways you'd be able to do it like if you go to coinbase and you say hey like give me all your information and then you have to like well that would use... be one way yeah mm -hmm. but uh, I, I think if you're talking about like looking to the network like just track where the cables go and then somehow get access to whoever's running the switches and then figure out where the packets came from and theoretically you can find people that way mm -hmm. um, which, which is what the government does when they're trying to like hunt people down but, so uh, how, there's, there's how does always around it how does crypto solve how would crypto solve that problem of sniffing packets um and government um you know regulation and oversight if you will like how can we prevent big brother from watching us well, from watching us, you could just encrypt the information in the packet so people don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, so if you don't know the source of the information, then uh, that's different. But then the, the, the servers that are, uh, I guess, like di directly uh, talking to other um, people, right? Those servers need to make sure that they don't say where they're getting their instructions from. Mm -hmm. that, that's how you prevent that specific scenario. So the internet is owned by like a bunch of big companies, right? Is there a way that we can like decentralize? I, I think ISPs are cables? decentralized right now. Um, like they just like talk to each other. They're like connected mm -hmm. to each other by these big cables and yeah, they just have all their routing. But someone has to lay down those cables, directly. I guess, and, mm -hmm. and own those. Yeah, but there's a lot of them owned by a lot of different companies. I think there's like a couple hundred under the water, like 400 different cables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, I, I want to ask a question about uh, investing. Like, let's say that you have $100,000 you want to invest and you want to take max risk. You don't know how to code. You don't want to develop a decentralized exchange. You're lazy. You just want to invest it somewhere. Where would you put that $100,000? Uh I think the the biggest thing there, there's like another question here to ask, which is like, what is your like, like uh, I guess goal with the money? Like, is it is it you know you just want to like do like wealth preservation, or do you want to try to like gamble it as hard as possible? Like it, it's wealth preservation. Yeah. Oh, wealth preservation. I would just put it into uh, some stable coin uh, staking thing. And earn like a healthy APY of twenty five percent or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think about like Ethereum, like Ethereum went up like 10% the other day or maybe today. I don't know. It went up a lot, nine, 10%. Like when I just put it in Ethereum instead of a stable coin, because if you think about it, if Ethereum is going to fail, the stable coins are probably going to fail too. So you might as well put it in Ethereum, right? Mm, or the stable coins logic. won't fail because they're, they're redeemable for a dollar. Um, as long as that property is true, then it should be okay. But like ETH has gone down too, right? I mean, ETH used to be $4,000. Now it's at like 33 something. Yeah. Um, or maybe it went back up, but yeah. Like the, the, those those currencies fluctuate a lot and it's really easy to lose money. Yeah, but well. if, if you're a long-term investor, oops. if you're a long-term investor um, and you're maximizing for you know wealth preservation, I mean, Bitcoin has performed what 400% year over year. So if you're thinking about it for like 10 years, you, you'd still yeah, put right. in stable would, coins? So, yeah, that's why is it wealth growth or wealth preservation? Those are, I guess, two well, separate uh, things. Yeah, I guess growth. Yeah, that's that's my question. <laughs> okay, but it would be like very modest, like low risk growth, relatively low risk growth. And yeah, I think Bitcoin and ETH are good. How about uh, max risk? Max risk? I mean, you yeah. just buy like the most random coins, like I guess mm -hmm. buy NFTs. That, that's, that's max risk. Mm -hmm. Are, how are you investing these days? Are you like full time with Saber, or are you looking at other companies and investing in them as well? Um, I am doing a little bit of angel investing, but uh, the vast majority of my holdings are in uh, like ETH and Bitcoin still. Mm -hmm. and, and you're uh, also I, I don't think I'm going to move them. Um, yeah, or uh, I, I think I'm actually net long 
crypto. Like, I, I don't think I'm actually holding fiat because I'm also borrowing a lot of money. Okay. Can we talk about that a little bit, the borrowing part? Yeah, sure. So how, how are you borrowing money? Um, I'm using a compound and I just have like all my ETH in there and I've just borrowed a, like a bunch of USDC. And I'm like farming, I'm farming with it and doing other things with it. Interesting. So your ETH is increasing. Let's assume Ethereum is going up. Your ETH is increasing in value. You're not touching it though, but then you're also leveraging and to pulling out USDC. What is, how much can you pull out? Is it like one to one or how does that work? Um, it's, it's not one to one. I think the maximum you could pull out is like 66% of the value of your ETH. Okay. Um, but like, you know, if, if ETH drops, you'll like li get liquidated, like they'll, they'll sell off all your ETH to pay for the loan. Um, right. but, uh, I actually don't know the specific percentage of leverage I have, but I, I think I'm only borrowing like 20% against my ETH. And you're putting that into farms. Yeah, farms. And uh, I think I have to pay taxes soon. Um, I've, I've been procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do how do farms work versus pool? Is, there's also pools too, right? Is it the same thing or is that different? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And what types of farms are you farming? Uh, personally, I'm just in Sabre right now. Um, okay. And, and some in Ubiswap. Okay. And what APYs are we earning now? Um, so I'm actually not in Saber directly. I'm in this thing called Sunny. Um, let me let me pull it up. So it's, it's Sunny.ag. Sunny, uh, sunny like the sun. Dot ag. Okay. It's a yield aggregator. But um, yeah, there the APYs are higher. So I just have my money in here, and I think I'm in the USDT USDC LP here. So 158 percent APY. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Interesting. So what they've done is they've staked into Saber, but then they're also giving Sunny tokens. Huh. And what is Sunny? Are you like um, affiliated with them as well? Um, I've helped them out on the technical side um, because you know they're they're working a lot with Saber, uh, but yeah, it's 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 its own team. And you're still thinking about everything in terms of like fiat dollars, right? You're still maximizing for U.S. dollars. Because you think that's With the money value. I'm borrowing, yes. Because I, I just okay. don't want to like, I don't want to like take a big risk and like end up in a ton of debt. Okay, so I just want to do like a quick example then. Let's say I have one ETH and I put it into um, compound. compound. Let's say ETH is $3,000. I pull out 20%, so that's $600. Meanwhile, Ethereum's appreciating. I'm also with that $600 putting it into Sunny. And with Sony, I'm earning off of the $600, 156% APY mm -hmm. on my USDT, USDC yep. thing. And that's a farm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then are you just continuously putting more, buying more Ethan with US dollars and putting that into the... Um, um, I'm, I'm not touching my bank account these days um, because I have to pay taxes. I just don't want to like move money. Um, okay. More, more, more money in the crypto. I need to uh, keep money around for that. And also okay. I bought a house, so I need, I need money to pay for that as well. Where are you keeping your cash? Is it in a, like a high yield savings account? No, it's in a checking account. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> no, because the high yield savings accounts pay like nothing. Like what's 2% what's percent. APY or no, it's actually, yeah, it's half a percent now. Yeah. 2% um, would be nice, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But it, like the, the money is like a rounding year because I also don't have very much in my checking account relative to like, I guess, crypto. Yeah, um, it's negligible. Yeah. Um, do you have like this goal of like retiring or do you feel like you've retired already or how does that? How do uh, I feel like I've that? retired already. Uh, okay. My retirement was, uh, my, my retirement was to work in crypto. Like uh, that, that, that's what I was thinking. And yeah, that, that, that's why I quit my job. At Pipe. At Pipe, yeah. You were there for a while too, so you have some equity, I'm assuming. Yeah, like a year and three months. Okay, very cool. Um, what does retirement look like for you? Um, 
writing code and uh, taking as few meetings as possible. I guess this is a meeting that you took, so I feel flattered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only meeting of the day, so. Yeah, I hate meetings too, man. I'm like, just Slack me and I'll maybe respond at some point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I also like oh. sleeping in, so. Uh, that's, oh, I love sleep. Thing. Yeah, I love sleep. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm no, making but, but these are nice, time. though. Yeah, these are nice though, because like it's just like a conversation. You just get to like talk about stuff you're interested in. That's that's always fun. Yeah, and hopefully in the future we'll both be productizing ourselves to a point where we have a large enough following to kind of cross pollinate, help with our long term goals. Um, I only have 170 subscribers on YouTube, but eventually I'd like to have you know a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you think about just traditional fiat investing? Are you doing stocks? Or do you have any um, money market accounts or anything like that? Um, I have my Roth IRA. Um, I'm not touching that at all because uh, I don't want to. Is get that going into penalty. crypto? No, 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 no. It just it's just like a Vanguard Roth IRA I set up when I was like 18. Um, okay. But I I'm not putting any more money into it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I, I, yeah, I sold the rest of my stocks um, like last year. So you just have cash and crypto? Yep. And your company, um, yeah, as well. Yeah, my company and I guess like some pipe equity. Okay. Interesting. So you probably have like an emergency fund if, in case something happens, right? You, you have like runway and cash in case something happens. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm in, I'm in stable strategies, right? So like, I mean, I don't really think about an emergency fund, Okay. but yeah, I mean, I, I do have cash in my bank account right now and you could say that's my emergency fund, but like, I mean, mm -hmm. there's also cash in like, you know, the, the saver bank account, right? Like, I mean, I could, you know, just pay myself or I, I'm not even paying myself a salary or <laughs> I should pay myself a salary, but like, yeah. My, my life's my life's very cheap. I mean, I live in Prosper. Like it's it's a very cheap place to live. Yeah, it's awesome. What are you most excited about in the future? What are you um, looking forward to leverage on Solana. Uh, like having like lending platforms in Solana so that people can actually borrow against their, like Soul or Saber or whatever, and uh, just invest into other things. Mm -hmm. How about um, besides crypto? Is there anything else you're looking into? right now mm. no not really I, I think crypto is the most interesting thing um mm -hmm. by far like i think it's going to be a very uh, big thing in the future are there other technologies besides the DeFi that look like something promising in the near future i mean yeah there's there's plenty of promising technologies but uh <laughs> You know, the financial industry continues to be the largest industry in terms of amount of money transacted just because of the finance industry, right? So um, that, that kind of stuff's like interesting to me. Um, I'm, 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 like a, I'm like a math and numbers guy. So um, yeah, I just have an affinity towards finance. Where else can we see crypto being used besides finance? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, theoretically, it could be used for anything, but... I really feel like the real value is in financial applications. But is there anything, let's say, social media or entertainment or fitness? Like, how how can it could that be, industry? But uh, here's the thing, right? Like, let's say social media. Um, the way social media companies make money today is through ads, right? But then if the premise of your blockchain protocol is to make it so that the users own their own data, right? Then you know that that, that company that's building this product is not going to have enough money to be as incentivized as Facebook to just like keep shipping out random products. Okay. So I, I think that social media will continue to be the way it is um, unless like consumers get concerned about their privacy too much, which they're not like, I mean, you look at TikTok, it's uh, yeah. no, no one cares. What if the people who are using the platform own part of the platform as well? <clears throat> And they're incentivized they really to grow. Yeah, I, I think they just want followers. I mean, like the, the main people who really use these things are like these, uh, you know, like these kids under like 20, right? And they're all on TikTok, just like making videos. Um, and, uh, you know, these influencers, sure, they're older than 20, but that they're, they're uh, consumers are all these 
like kids that are you know watching their YouTube videos or TikToks or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think people just won't care. Mm -hmm. So you don't really see anything that crypto could be used in, at least right now, besides finance. Um, I mean, I think privacy technology in general is useful. Um, like if there's some way you need to communicate with someone anonymously, um, then crypto could be a good way for that because you can associate everything with like an identity that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in terms of social media, like, I mean, it's a cool use case, but like, I just don't see, uh, like a 10 year old kid caring about their like privacy or whatever. What if they could make more money from their content? I think 10 year old kids don't care about money either. Well, I mean, let's say 25 year old kid, you know, who's a Instagram fitness influencer. Well, those influencers are making tons of money already from, from their Instagram content. So I think they won't really necessarily care as much if it's on crypto or not. They just, they just want to like maximize profits. And you know, if they're getting like uh, revenue sharing on their ads, like on YouTube, right. Then they'll just stick with that. Mm -hmm. Are people making money on TikTok as well with like their huge followings? Like, do they get a CPM or art revenue? I don't know. Per that, thousand? Uh, I, f I actually have no idea how, how yeah. TikTok influencers make their money. I, I, I think they probably even do like Instagram. brand deals or something. Yeah, because Instagram and TikTok, they don't pay you for having good content, but YouTube does. Mm -hmm. So I find I that interesting. Yeah. Um, what is going to be the Bitcoin of Bitcoins? Does that make sense? Like what's going to, dis I guess, disrupt Bitcoin? Or what, what if you could pause it? I don't think anything will. I think Bitcoin will continue to be this digital cult, this, this digital gold that everyone's going to keep holding. Just like, you know, nothing's disrupted gold either. And I mean, there's, yeah. there's well, maybe Bitcoin has valuable. Not really, though. No. Gold's uh, still around and it'll continue to be around. There will just be another gold. So, okay. So uh, let's stick with that now. Do you think that wealth, everyone can be wealthy? Like how Naval talks about like how there's this infinite frontier, like everyone can be a rich person. Yeah. Do you think that's possible? I, I, I think so. Yes. Why, why can't I wrap my head around that? Or like, wh why do you think people can't wrap their head around that? Um, like there's rich and poor, like there's a finite amount of money out there. I think most people uh, are used to thinking of wealth in terms of salary. Um, but you know, there's, I think if you look at things like this high APY, right, you'll realize that there, there are more forms to wealth than just money. Um, and then from that, you can, I guess, decipher that. And I think the other thing is a lot, a lot of people uh, think of things as like performing a service in order to get, um, like money or wealth. Right. But the thing is there's more like, technology is moving forward and a lot of people are not, I guess, as familiar with like how technology moves forward and they just see things as like, you know, you're just doing a small thing for someone else, but, yeah. um, you know, things are getting cheaper to do, but they're not actually getting cheaper in terms of dollar value. They're just, there's just more dollars in the world now. So, um, yeah, wow. I, I think it's just a combination of those two things. Mm -hmm. There's more dollars in the world. Now. How much more not dollars? dollars is there? But, so I, I think the, well, there actually are more dollars, but it's not because of that. It's actually because of this, uh, COVID stuff. But um, there's more wealth in the world. And it's because, uh, you know, when, when you buy, when someone buys a hundred, like a million dollars worth of Tesla stock, the, the value of Tesla doesn't go up by a million dollars. It goes up by more than a million dollars. Um, so that's, I guess, how uh, wealth gets created. Other thing, right? Let's say you're like raising a round, right? And, you know, you have a company, like you're, let's say you're raising like a $10 million valuation, right? Like you actually made that money out of thin air because even if you raise a million dollars, there's also another $10 million worth of stock that's floating around. So like, I think, I guess it, that might be another way to think about this. Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. So wealth can be created in different ways besides just raw salary or money. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you could be wealthy in your heart. You could be wealthy in real estate. You could be wealthy owning a bunch of solar panels. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Maybe not the heart one, but, uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like the, the dollar value. Okay. So what is your strategy now for becoming wealthy? Just continuing what you're doing then? Um, 
I guess my goal is not really to be wealthy. My goal is to just build good products that people want to use. Um, okay. Yeah. I, like I said, I already uh, retired. Yeah. What, what gets you going about all the stuff you're working on? If it's not the money, like, is it just delighting customers? Like what's your North star kind of like happiness metric here? Like what's really keeping you going? Um, whenever I see our users just using our product, it's just very uh, exciting. Um, it's not really about the money. It's just about like seeing people using something that we like building. And how do you see them using it? Do you like watch it through like a hot jar on the website or do you like see it like on social media or what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, social media is one thing, but uh, I mean, just seeing the amount of money locked in the platform is like pretty cool too. Yeah. Just like thinking like, you know, how, how big we're going to get compared to like, you know, these like, I don't know, banks. Um, oh, I, I guess another thing that um, is keeping me going is whenever I go to the bank, it's just like a terrible experience. Like uh, yeah. I'm, I was trying to make an angel investment yesterday and uh, they like blocked my wire for some reason. So I had to go to the bank, but then they're like, oh yeah, you need to talk to a banker for it. So now I have to go to the oh bank again in person. It's like super annoying. You know, yeah. with crypto, right? You just like click a button and you, you can send the money. Um, so yeah, it's... Yeah, crypto is just like something that I feel like is underappreciated. How are you looking at these projects that you're angel investing in? How do you know which ones to invest in? Like, do you have a checklist or do you do you listen to your gut or do you invest in stuff that looks uh, different? Like, how are you looking at these investments? Yeah, um, that, that's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could say on the recording, <laughs> but, uh, well, it is a, po is it a positive yeah. sum game? If you tell people what you're investing in, since you've already invested in it or, <laughs> well, I mean, cause they're, if they're angel investments, it means that they are not deals that everyone has access to necessarily. Right. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just looking at the risk and reward. Uh, I'm generally more risk averse. Um, but also like, sometimes you're buying like a person, right? Sometimes you're, you're buying like someone to uh, work with you, right? And that, that, that's like a pretty nice type of angel investment because you're, uh, it's like you're hiring someone almost. Um, but yeah, I guess it's a combination of risk and reward. Um, and I wanna make sure that the reward highly outweighs whatever risk is involved in the investment. Is there an investment that you made that you can talk about that do you think we'll have like a high reward? Um, nothing in recording. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> um, so you, you like to invest in people, you said. Are you investing in co-founders then as well as projects or are you looking at projects more or how, how does that, what does that risk reward look like? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to invest in people that, uh, are going to work with us to build something good um or they're they if they were to get big it would cause us to get bigger um so you're investing in companies that have some type of connection to saber right now is what you're saying yeah not just saber though but like any anything i'm invested in yeah i guess, I guess solana yeah i mean if project is building a solana i would generally invest in it um especially if it's trying to do something that's not ethereum mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely biased towards stuff where uh, the team wants to build on top of Saber. Interesting. Have you had projects built on top of Saber already that have deployed? Yeah, um, I think Sunny, example of one. Yeah, it has two hundred thirty-five million dollars in it. It's pretty crazy. Wow, it'd be funny if they like beat your TVL. <laughs> yeah, that would be um, good, right? Yeah, I guess if they build on top of something other than Saber, that that could happen. Oh yeah, they they couldn't do it without. Yeah, they'd have to diversify um, yeah. outside of Saber. What's a question that you want me to ask you? Or what's a question that you don't get asked a lot that you want to talk about? I don't know. That, that's a good question. Um, I, I really don't have anything. <laughs> or another question oh, yeah, I have yeah. is like, what is something that you wish people took more seriously about you or what you're working on? 
Mm. I don't know. I think I think people are taking it seriously enough. There's quite a bit of money in this platform now. Um, I mean, I guess if people, uh, yeah, I, I really don't care though. I was gonna say if people took Solana seriously and uh, thought it was a serious change, but like it doesn't really matter to me because I, uh, I, I also I don't think that Solana is very developed right now. I think that there's not very much to do. So uh, you know, people have to build the things before I can actually say something like that. And uh, also, it's kind of like, I guess, an alpha leak if nobody uh, else is on Solana yet. Um, and we're like early, like, it's nice to be like part of this early ecosystem that, you know, is going to get really big. So I don't necessarily want people to think that Solana is where it needs to be yet. Which application do you think that once built on Solana is going to really take, make Solana take off? Um, lending or leverage, uh, just some way for people to borrow against their money. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh, I, I guess the other thing is, uh, like yield farming, like if, if people made it easy to create new yield farms, I think that'd be really big too. Mm -hmm. How often are you rebalancing your portfolio in terms of crypto? Because the last time we talked, you were, you, you told me about like about Rari Capital or some random um, farm, and then you told me about something else. Are you moving stuff around a lot? Mm, these days, no. Um, I'm really focused on building because, uh, I think that if uh, if we can get Solana to like 10 billion TVL, then all of these things are not are, are going to be worth a lot more than they are today. So I, I just don't really care that much about rebalancing right now. Mm -hmm. um, what is Solana's TVL right now? Um, I think it's like three billion, three point five billion, something like that. Yeah, pretty insane. Yeah, yeah, three point six billion. And the market cap is fully diluted, 64 million, billion. Wow. God, that's so much money. <laughs> Are there any projects under, let's say a billion dollar market cap or 500 million that you're bullish about that you can talk about? Under 500 million market cap. Um, what's Sunny's market cap right now? Um, so if they're at point one, or 1.3 cents. Then they're not on coin market cap, right? They're not. No, that, that's that's part of why I'm bullish because they uh, have little documentation. Um, but I know they're a good team. Uh, how do you buy? Sunny? How, how do you yeah. buy? You have to uh, go to Serum um, or Aldrin Dex. So if you go to um, app.sunny.ag, there's like a link um, in the header. It's like the one on the right. Um, it looks like some like alien or something, or I guess it's an astronaut, but, um, App yeah, so, AG. yeah, but, um, there's 20 billion tokens in like when it becomes fully diluted. So I'm just going to do the math because I can't think right now. So that would put it at a, uh, oh wait, no, I did it wrong. 20 billion times 1.39 cents. That would be 278 million fully diluted. But yeah, I think this is a very solid team though. And uh, right now they're going through this uh, like period where they're just giving out a lot more tokens than uh, they will in the future. So uh, to like, I guess, increase the float. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm farming in that and I'm really excited for the project. Sunny app.sunny.ag, I don't see like a way to buy the tokens there. I see so, connect uh, wallet go to the top um or there's like a link there's like five icons uh -huh. actually if you scroll to the bottom of the page just click on Al aldrin dex oh i see yeah but yeah Not you can, you can your buy country. tokens in this aldrin thing um vpn <laughs> oh you need a vpn for aldrin it says not available in your country oh wow okay no it, it wasn't like that before plot twist yeah. Yeah, these, this uh, VPN stuff needs to be improved though. Hopefully uh, someone launches something that's actually decentralized so they don't need to do that. Yeah, how would, how would that work? How would, how would that problem be solved? Um, 
someone just needs to deploy this to like, um, there's this thing called IPFS. Mm -hmm. um, I think actually, I think Arby's a better one, but um, you basically upload like an entire website to this like blockchain and then the blockchain just like serves the, uh, the uh, static assets. So like basically uh, it's, it's like, a, I guess you can think of it like maybe like LimeWire or something like just like access the website directly um, because it's like shared peer to peer. Mm -hmm. And it tells the website that it's in a different country, but really it's in the US, something like that. Um, well, so in this case, you're actually just downloading like the actual like HTML, CSS, JavaScript images, all that stuff. Uh, you're downloading it directly from um, our weave. So you wouldn't even have to uh, do that. Hmm. Are you trading everything uh, through your phone or through your desktop? Um, good question. Uh, I, I guess desktop actually, yeah. I just think about there must be so many people that could be doing like, okay, think about this. Remember when Reddit was just desktop? Mm-hmm. That was only like what three, four years ago. Like, can you imagine that everyone is using Reddit on their phones now? Like ninety yeah. percent, let's just say. I, I like think that, there was such a huge shift in yeah. four years. There's a huge opportunity, I think, to develop DeFi exchanges, DeFi. et cetera, on your phone. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And um, most of our users on the stuff like Saber, not most, but like a, a very large amount of them are mobile users. So um, yeah, we want to make sure that those people are well supported. How are they using their phones? Because I have to, I plug in like my my ledger, right? And I use it that way. How are they using their phone? Like, are they connecting through an app? Uh, yeah, so on Saber, uh, on Saber they uh, use this app called Solid. Um, it's, it's not an app, it's it's in their browser. But basically Solid. they have to just keep Solid open in a different tab. And then Saber is able to, they're able to do everything with Saber. So like if they're on Safari, they can use Solid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And where is where are the coins stored? Like, is that they're is stored in a they're they're stored in the the local storage of your phone's browser. So it's not the most secure thing, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a question that I'm curious about: is are you working with uh, banks at all, like issuing banks, or is this completely decentralized? What you're doing? Um, it's completely decentralized. I think about like, for example, if someone wants to build a Coinbase, like they have to use an issuing bank to convert that fiat into Ether, mm -hmm. for example. Is there a way to side skirt completely the issuing bank and build something that interfaces with fiat and with crypto? Some type of API or that you know of? Um, yeah, there's a few of those, but what I'm more bullish on personally is uh, if people just did everything through crypto, like imagine if you built Gusto, except like, you just got paid directly in USDC because USDC is the same thing as USD, right? You it can is, always yeah. turn it back into a, uh, into dollars. Um, I, I think like the US, like the visa stuff is pretty big for USDC. Like visa ha is uh, making, or maybe they made a debit card that connects directly to like a USDC wallet. Um, so mm -hmm. you don't have to, uh, like worry about all this other stuff, but, uh, yeah, theoretically, I think another big thing would be point of sale. Like, if something like Square made it so you could pay directly in USDC, um, that would be really big too, because that, that means that, that USDC is value to people. How would users pay? They would pay using uh, their uh, their phone, like something like Apple Pay, I guess. So it, it's a, it's a two-sided approach. You need to get people on to onboard to it, and then you have to also get merchants to accept it. Yeah, and merchants Where's, accepting it, I think, is doable. Um, like, I mean, Square yeah. is already really big on Bitcoin, right? But theoretically, they just need to add support for something like USDC, then everyone will use it. The thing is, there's probably a lot of regulatory reasons why they haven't done that yet. So I think that there might be a different country that supports these kinds of crypto payments first. Because the blockchain is just like another ledger, right? It's 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 like a it's like Visa, right? It's it's just a place for people to. Uh, perform transactions, except they don't pay any fees to like some central like company. Mm -hmm. What's the incentive for someone to build that then? It already has been built. Or are you talking about the point of sale thing or the, uh, yeah. the network? The point of sale thing, um, they, uh, you could, they could uh, have a token on the point of sale thing where, uh, you know, people 
who are uh what's it called like like that, that they can have a token that has some sort of value that controls mm -hmm. the uh, decentralized application that um lets people do this point of sale stuff so every time they did it they would get a piece of that company not exactly it, it'd be more like um there's just a token involved in this payment system that uh has value because let's say it charges like an interchange fee of like i don't know 0.1 right if people are using the point of sale app and everyone's using this point of sale app and it all goes back to the token holders then uh, that token could theoretically be worth a lot if people think that project's going to get really big. So that could be someone's incentive. Yeah. So you start a company and then you have ownership in that coin and then you're incentivized to build more because you own part of that company. So you might not be um, making fees on every transaction, but you're owning the company that is, is creating. Yeah, that. That, yeah, that could be one way of doing it. Yeah. Or I think the other thing would be just um, you have tokens and whenever someone makes a transaction, you have your token staked and you get a percentage of all of these transactions. Mm. Ah, I see. That's cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other questions I have. Do you think that, okay, so uh, here's a good question. What's going to happen in the end with crypto? Like I think about banks, Wells Fargo, Chase, et cetera. Like are, is crypto going to fully disrupt these banks? I think so, yeah. So what's going to happen at JP Morgan Chase? Well, uh, pivot into crypto. You know what, I'm sorry? They'll, they'll pivot into being a crypto company of some sort. How, how what would that look like? Like they just move all their money into Ethereum or something or their treasury? Uh, I mean, they wouldn't necessarily buy ETH, but uh, I mean, they could just make it so that they uh, they support cryptocurrency transactions really well, and uh, they make it so that um, if you're using them as a bank, they uh, they take USDC, for example. But they'd be making less money then because there's no there's no overdraft fees, there's no high transaction yeah, fees. Yeah, the, well, they'd have less fees, but that doesn't mean they'd be making less money. They could actually be making more money because there's all this yield farming going on and they're taking a cut of it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And people already trust Chase. So I, I think whichever bank does this first is gonna make a lot of money. Maybe like a Chase coin or something. No, they don't even have the Chase coin. They could just have a Chase savings account that stakes into Saber and you know, Saber's paying uh 12 percent but they take like six like half of that and they give six percent to all the people staking in chase i mean the, the apys won't be that high if um i mean they could be i don't know why aren't you selling to chase or these big banks or maybe um, you are I, it just hasn't crossed my mind uh yeah you know if, if they <laughs> want to do it though they they should build yeah. off of it interesting might be a good opportunity there Huh. Uh, it, it's just a lot of work to uh, work with a company that big. Um, and I, I don't like meetings. These yeah, are just I mean, build something that's better than Chase. I mean, you've effectively already done that. <laughs> I guess At least so, in, yeah. in one part, yeah. That's true, that's true. Lending. What would the lending rates be? Like if I want to take out USDC? Um, on Compound right now, I, I can actually check. They are let me see. Oh well, they have more assets in here now. So you can currently borrow USDC for 5.53%, but you get 1.85% APY of comp tokens. So your net is uh well, that's not right. 3.68% APY, um, which is higher than APR. USDC, I see 5.53. And the people lending to that, what is what are they getting the um, APY at, do you know? Um, it says they're getting 4.1% lending so, and then 1.49% distribution. So. Compound is making that spread difference. 
Um, one point yeah, the, the spread comes from the supply and the borrow. So supply is 4.1, borrow is 5.53. And um, so the first part is that there are more, uh, there are more people lending than borrowing. So that's why mm -hmm. borrowing is going to just be a higher rate. Um, yeah, but the, the actual like rates are determined by some algorithm. And compound finance is keeping a portion of that USD coin. They're taking a very small spread on that, yeah. Interesting. God, this stuff is so fascinating. I mean, I could see how you could learn about this stuff all day. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I do. Yeah. And this is just the renaissance of, of DeFi, like of just finance in general. Like, there's so much stuff going on. It's such a evergreen market. Yeah. Such a new yeah, frontier. Uh, one thing you mentioned is you're getting access to like angel investments. Is that because of your internet presence and all the stuff you're working on? Or are you reaching out to people and getting access? I think internet presence, um, not just internet, but like general presence. I mean, I think people respect Sabre now. Uh, so, I mean, we're just getting access to deals because people are like, hey, you want to be in on this thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, also like I have, my friends are... Uh, my friends are becoming like, I guess, more well-connected over time um, just because we're all like getting older, I guess. So yeah, um, yeah they, they share things with me sometimes. I'm gonna make an assumption here. I think, is it Ubiswap is getting more internet traffic than Sabre right now? Maybe, I don't know. Um, Actually, no, never mind. I, I lied. I'm, looking, I'm just looking at the Alexa ranking. I'm very surprised. <laughs> yeah, Sabre is 32,000 Alexa ranking. Oopswap is yeah, 80, 83. Going crazy. And Oopswap and Saber are interconnected in some way? Uh, they're inter interconnected by the team working on it. Yeah, on both. But there's no like on-chain stuff happening between them? Not yet. Um, we really just need those bridges. Wow. Cool. Um, anything else you want to say to my tiny audience of people <laughs> anything um, else you want to put out into the world or any other anything else you want to say in general yeah i mean i guess one thing i forgot to mention um about my like investing is uh i think real estate's really good if you could get really high leverage on it um yeah that, that stuff just goes up and like the the interest rates are really low um so yeah i definitely recommend buying some sort of real estate if you haven't done that yet where would you buy real estate? Uh, so, I mean, I bought in Prosper. Um, cause That's near Dallas. Uh, but yeah, yeah, near Dallas. It's like, it's like north of Dallas. Um, Are appreciation rates going up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my house has appreciated a ton. And uh, yeah. I haven't even sent the money yet. <laughs> so that's really nice. Um, yeah, like literally I haven't sent any money or paid for the house yet other than like some deposits. Uh, but the house has appreciated like four times more than my deposits. So that's uh, yeah, pretty insane. Or not four times, like much higher than that, actually. So yeah, you're, that's basically like an eight hundred percent ROI. Um, if it's like eight times more, which I think it is. You're um, saying in terms of your down um, payment? No, because I haven't paid my down payment yet. Because I, I built it's new construction. Oh. Um, so basically, I put down a deposit last year um, to buy this house. Like I think like August or September. Um, and then I put like another deposit down for like my flooring and the, like design of the house. Um, but the house has appreciated a lot. Like new houses are selling right now for like um, eight or I'll just give you the hard numbers because it's okay. Um, I think the house was worth like 320 when I bought it. Um, and now it's like going for four, 400 or 420 or something like that. Wow. Um, but um, since I only put down like, like $10,000 worth of money as deposits for all of this stuff, um, you can think of it as I spent $10,000 to uh, go from 320 to 400, so 80K, which is- 8X uh, return. Yeah. 7X. Yeah. 8X return. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm thinking of buying another property in Austin sometime uh, in the next year or wh whenever I get more uh, like money in my bank account that I need to uh, diversify with. And also like, uh, I feel like Austin's a more fun city. It is, it's very fun. Um, what is a, what, what type of down payment are you putting down? Are you putting down like 20% to avoid PMI or are you doing 5% or? 
I'm going to try to do 5%. Uh, like I said, I haven't done the down commit yet, so that's why the returns are so high. Um, yeah, theoretically, the returns won't be as high effectively um, afterwards, but yeah, I'm going to do as low as possible. What if there's a downturn in the market, though, and you're over, you're underwater? How would you fix that? Um, I'm, I'm buying properties where I'd hold them long term. Like, I, I don't think I'm ever going to sell the house here um, in, a, in Prosper for like a while. Mm -hmm. um, same with if I were to buy something in Austin. But uh, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, I, what, I'm, what I'm more concerned with is like my other assets that are not my real estate. Um, so those would, those would cover whatever the downturn is. What bank are you using to get your mortgage through? Um, ask. I don't know yet. Oh, you don't. <laughs> I, need to, I need to, I need to shop around for rates, but it's. So you, it's you, you purchased this house without a down payment. How did, how does that work? I didn't buy the house yet. I uh, put down oh. a deposit and I'm supposed to get the house, but, um, I have not put down the down payment yet. Oh, so you're not in the house yet. No, I'm not in the house. I'm oh, actually okay. in my parents' house right now. Oh, I, I thought you were in the house because you have all these boxes. I'm like, oh, you just moved in. No, no, no. My parents also bought a house in the in the same neighborhood. So, yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Austin's kind of tough, man. It's There's not much for like under 500, honestly. <laughs> I think eventually, though, the market, and it's slowing down already, too. Um, at least the acceleration rate is slowing down. Um I just don't know what's going to happen in the next year or two. If there's like a huge correction or something. It's possible, but I think if there's a huge correction, um, I think crypto is going to get hurt, hurt like much more than the real estate market. Yeah. What is, what is your exit strategy there? If you have one. Um, for which one? Like, let's say if Ethereum takes a 70% dump, like, would you pull out or? Uh, I didn't pull out when it dumped. No, you did not. No, I mean it. It. I think recently it went from like forty three hundred to fifteen hundred or something, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's like seventy percent, right? Yeah, or maybe like sixty percent. But yeah, no, I didn't pull out because uh, I'm a long term believer in crypto. Yeah. Interesting. So you'd say invest in. Ethereum. I'm and just going to say what I'm investing in, which yeah. is Bitcoin and ETH. And those are, those are assets that are not going to go away anytime soon. Okay. Um, anything else is like a lot more risky, but Bitcoin and ETH themselves are also pretty risky. Uh, okay. So are you 50, 50 yeah. on them or do you have more of one? Um, probably like 80, 20 or 80, 80 on the Ethereum. Um, maybe even more actually. I'm I'm much heavier on Ethereum than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like tokens I got in like 2014. Like I I just didn't buy anymore. Um, but ETH like that, that's what I I poured my uh, money into. Are you are you dollar cost averaging Ethereum as well, or are you just holding what you have? Um, I'm just holding. Um, yeah, I also don't believe in dollar cost averaging. I think it the uh, I think it takes too long. I think it's better to just buy this big like lump sum and just like don't look at it or i mean you can you can look at it uh, i look at it but just don't like yeah. mess with it for like a long just time buy and hold yeah interesting is there anything you are dollar cost averaging nope i guess your house because you know you're paying a monthly salary oh yeah that. technically i'm dollar cost averaging that or not really though dollar cost you averaging can sell is it. about like the price right no because yeah. you i locked in the price of the house already so there's no dollar cost averaging there yeah you're right yeah, yeah, I'm not dollar cost averaging. I, I think that it's, uh, I think it just takes too much effort. And I think it's better to just like buy a lump sum if you think something's a good investment, like long term. Any other investments that you can think of that you're in that's not real estate or crypto or your Roth IRA? Or angel yeah, investment? but the Roth IRA is like a joke. Um, and I guess I have, a, I have a 401k as well, but um, yeah. that's also kind of like a joke. Uh, I mean, by joke, I mean like, it's just only going up by a very small amount every single year. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, crypto is the place to be. That's, that's, that's what I think. Cool. Um, in terms of your company, are you looking for any type of talent? Oh, um, yeah, we're looking for people who 
can build products from scratch um, end to end that don't require very much handholding. Um, <laughs> okay. Like devs yeah. or designers, like, or like you're saying full fledged products. Yeah, I, I, ideally devs, yeah. Um, but like if someone can just design, I think that's also pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and also these people ideally have a DeFi or some sort of some sort of crypto background. Um, not even financial necessarily. Uh, or financial is okay, but like crypto is very different than traditional finance. So I think the crypto background helps a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're just hiring people who, who want to build products and want to Salary plus uh, tokens plus equity then? Um, yes. Interesting. I'll see if I can think of anyone. Are you paying like competitive rates then too? I think they're very competitive. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. How big is your team now? Uh, five people. Um, and uh, only only two devs, which is me and uh, and Michael. Wow, five people, eight million, seven million in the bank. It's pretty good. You probably can't disclose the terms of the deal, can you? Like, what your valuation is? Uh, no. Yeah, I can't. I can't disclose that. What what the valuation was? I'm assuming it's pretty high. I mean, I can't see them taking fifty percent of the company. <laughs> That would be crazy. Yeah. Um, cool, man. What? One more question. I guess developers, like, what type of developers are you looking for? Like you said, Rust is that the language you're you're working in, or? Um, we're not necessarily. I mean, to be honest, when I started Saber, I didn't even know Rust. Like, not even when I started. Like when we raised for Saber, I didn't know Rust. Um, yeah. Just kind of picked it up. <laughs> But I mean, anyone who's just like a good engineer um, should be able to like pick everything up or anyone who's a good designer should be able to like just build something that looks good. Um, yeah, I have no preference, but uh, okay, actually, I think one thing that'd be really nice is someone with really good front end engineering skills, um, like where they can, they can build a really nice looking app really fast. Yeah, I mean, your, your website looks really good. I think, is your brother designed that? Yeah, he designed it, yep. Wow, that's amazing. And he built it in Webflow? No, I, uh, he, uh, he got me to write it. Oh, so you did this from scratch? Yeah, it's all from scratch. What did you uh, write it in? Uh, just React. Wow. Amazing, man. Five people. It doesn't seem like you're very um, hungry for talent. Like you're kind of just going with the flow right now. Or are you like actively looking for people? It's not active. Uh... For, for every, uh, like it's, it's very hard to hire people, um, especially people that are good. They're like very uh, picky, I guess. So yeah. we just need to figure out how to uh, get them excited about what we're building. And I mean, I, I think the easiest way to do that is just to grow the company. Um, yeah, because it's, it's, it's an uphill battle to get talent, like if you're not that big yet. So yeah, I guess we need to have like two, two or $3 billion under our belt or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, enough. I don't know. You'll you'll be there soon. Yeah, Hopefully, Naval yeah. Ravikant talks about like hiring people who are high energy, high intelligence, high integrity. And typically, at least from what I've seen when I've worked with people, is like one of those is lacking. But to find that trifecta is like you want to hold on to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think all three are are very important. But yeah, hopefully, uh. Hopefully we can find people. Um, it's just it's just very hard. It's a very competitive market. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, man. Um, I think that's all my questions. Thank you for taking the time. Um, where can people find you on the internet? Um, I have a Twitter. It's uh, simply E and M. <laughs> um, I made it when I was in seventh grade because I was trying to like make a blog and stuff, but I just kept it. <laughs> cool. But uh, yeah, simply E and M. And you have a website, ian.puw? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my personal website. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, go find them there, people. And uh, if you're a front-end developer, talk with Ian. <laughs> All Thanks, right, cool. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this recording now. Cool.